by 2050, a quarter of the world's population will be living in the African continent. And the endowments that we have, the huge energy resources that we have, green energy resources that we have in wind, in solar, in geothermal, in hydro, the huge resources we have in sustainable agriculture, because we have two-thirds of the world's uncultivated agricultural land. And with our demographic dividend, the continent that is going to assist the globe in making sure that we have not just green energy and green industrialization, but assist in decarbonizing the rest of the world. We all agree today that the conversation is no more, it should not be a North versus South conversation, or rich versus poor, or the emitters versus the non-emitters. We need to find a win-win conversation that will make the emitters work with the non-emitters so that we can solve this problem. Because we need a new financing deal that will make it possible for all of us as humanity to realize the existential threat that we face as humanity. The North is as at a risk as is the South. The emitters are as vulnerable as the non-emitters. So we need to work together. This is not time for finger pointing. This is not time for claim game. This is the time for us to work together towards a solution to save our planet, to ensure that we deploy all the resources we have. Those of us from the African continent are not going to, we're not going to lament to anybody. We want to have a conversation of equals. We want to have a conversation of the assets that we have. We have huge renewable energy assets. We have huge mineral assets that can be used to deploy hydrogen technology to sort out the power challenge that we have. The North can come with technology and financial resources. Everybody becomes a winner. This is the conversation we want to have. It is not, it's not a conversation about aid. It's not a conversation about loan. It's a conversation about investment where everybody comes with their assets. That is the conversation we want to have. We should be discussing a financial ecosystem, a new international financial mechanism that is going to have no lesser or greater partners, that is going to be a win-win where everybody is treated equally. For those of you who are in the development finance sector, you know very well that today some countries access development finance at 10, 12 percent. Others access development finance at 1 percent, maybe half a percent. We are saying we should have an international financial system that treats everybody equally and that does not disadvantage others because of an element called risk. We must find a way of de-risking everybody and making development finance available to all of us equally. To ask for a fair international financial system is not to ask for too much. I think it's the fair thing to do. It's an unfair system. And uh, uh, any perpetuation of a, an unfair system is unfair to everybody. And the good news, for the first time, climate change, there is no developing or developed country. We are all in the same boat. However hard you try, you cannot have unilateral action at the corner. 
if this place is burning, you cannot have an air condition at your corner. It will not work. You will have to find a way of sorting out everybody if you have to sort yourself out. So I think the, the sooner we realize that, the better for all of us, and we can all come around one table and have one conversation that gives win-win for everybody. This is why Kenya is honored to host the 25th Africa Energy Forum, which and why I am delighted to have this opportunity to engage with you. I welcome all visitors, wish you all a pleasant stay in the green city in the sun, and enjoy to make a little time to experience the warmth, luxury, beauty, delight, and charms of magical Kenya. And as Minister Davis said, I welcome all of you to the conversation of a lifetime or between the 4th and the 6th of um, September, when as leaders from this continent, we will be sitting down to consolidate our position so that we can contribute to solving the climate change paradox. We are putting our thoughts together. I am hopeful that in Paris we will be able to configure and agree on a new financial deal which we will consolidate. We can globalize in the UN General Assembly later this year and we can finally sign off and conclude in COP28. I am very hopeful that we are in the space to finally sort out what we started almost 20 years ago at the first Paris Agreement. A lot of tension has built over time. Today, we need to go back to the principles that brought us together when we sat in Paris many years ago, and we need to finally bring this to a conclusion. We've been at it for far too long. And I'm saying for far too long because 20 years is a long time. And we have seen that it is possible to make long-lasting, fundamental decisions without spending 20 years. Let me give you an example. The current World Bank and IMF were in a small city called Bretton Woods in a record couple of weeks. Today, it is 80 years old. It was agreed upon by 44 countries, I think, with about 700 delegates. When Germany was faced with a challenge, it took them one session to change their constitution and raise $110 billion for their defense. After the Cold War, Europe came together and established the reconstruction bank that today is European Investment Bank. Within six months, it was ready, and within 18 months, it was doing the business for which it was set up. We have plenty of time between now and COP28 to agree on a new financing mechanism that is climate sensitive. It's been, it's been done in weeks, it's been done in months. This one has taken years, 15 years. Don't you think, good people, it's time to bring it to a conclusion? I sincerely think it's time to bring it to an end. And COP28 it is, according to me. Finally, I look forward to engaging further with insights from the outcome of your engagements and wish you very productive deliberations. 
and outcomes in your time here. The Africa Energy Forum is now opened. Thank you very much. I'm a king. Yes, I'm a king. I think. I'm a king. Okay.